Hello, everyone. As you may think, for many students, chemistry might not be the most pleasant subject they take in school. I wasn't an exception either. Chemistry was not on the list of my favorite subjects at all. This until one day, when I stumbled upon this picture of two feet wearing a pair of sneakers with a periodic table printed on them. I was immediately fascinated by this picture because I realized that this person must have loved chemistry very much, since anyway, if he really wanted to copy in his chemistry exams, these shoes wouldn't have helped him at all, because the periodic table is attached to any chemistry paper he would take. So I was inspired to find that beautiful and important part of chemistry that I haven't known before, but that this person had already discovered. Then I realized that I, all of us, each and every one of us, is actually a chemistry lab. We, our bodies, our senses, even our thoughts and feelings are actually chemical reactions. All deep inside us, all our tissues are actually made of elements that form substances and molecules, and that further form organs, organisms, and even the entire universe. Do you understand now why I love chemistry so much? Because I like you, the people, the chemistry within each one of you. As a result, I started studying chemistry with a lot of attention and from a totally different perspective. I'm a grade 9 student, so I have been studying chemistry for almost three years. We have recently studied about how substances react with each other, and like a faithful mathematician, I was always looking for patterns. I wanted to find that rule that elements apply when they react with each other. Why do some elements react while others don't? Why do they only react in certain proportions? Not all the answers were in my chemistry book. So I went to my teacher, and she pointed to the periodic table. And I will tell you immediately what she said. Meanwhile, I was trying to develop a useful program that could help in the study of chemistry. But in order to understand how any subject has come to the point that it is in, in the present, we must first know something about its past. How has chemistry evolved throughout history? How has the periodic table come to be? Well, elements were not discovered all at the same time. Although there were prolific periods in which 63 elements have been discovered, at this point already, people wanted to arrange them somehow in order to study them easier and to recognize their patterns. Back in the Middle Ages, alchemists were trying to develop, were trying to discover the philosopher's stone, the one with which they wanted to transform any ordinary metal into gold, and with which they wanted to cure any disease. In their attempts, they used various chemical formulae and they discovered all kinds of elements and substances. After the Middle Ages, almost all of the elements of the periodic table have been discovered. Nowadays, we know there are 98 elements that are found in nature, and 20 more have been made in the lab. Probably there are still more waiting there to be found, but all of them are arranged in this periodic table. Among these 98 elements, and these 118 elements that have been discovered was hydrogen, the most important element in the universe, the one which the stars are made from, and the entire galactic systems are made from. Basically, people needed millions of years in order to discover the most important element in the universe, the one which our bodies are made in more than 65%, and which is found in the substance of life, water. Later, the credit for being the father of the periodic table went to Dmitry Mendeleev, who wasn't such a bright student and who has hardly come to even be a chemist, but who had a spark. He used to play chemical solitaire on his long journeys on the train, and he had this idea of arranging elements somehow. He made a card for each single element on which he wrote a symbol the atomic weight and some of its properties. Then he arranged them in order of ascending atomic weight and according to some of their similar properties. And so the periodic table was created. But just as a little advice, 
Don't try to play cards in order to become famous. But if playing cards will help you put together your ideas in a way you hadn't done before, then go ahead and do that. It might be helpful. Later on, he did this. And he made all this. But now you will probably ask, since all this is already known, then what more can I do about it? What is the connection between me and the periodic table? Well, I must say I do spend a lot of time on my computer. And so I thought, since there is a pattern in the properties of elements, then maybe this could be written in a number form. And numbers could be introduced in computers. I could teach the program to use this pattern in order to give direct information to the user. But interactive periodic tables had already been made, with a box dedicated to each single element and to its physical properties. So I thought if I could do more. In my chemistry classes, I was always bothered by a question. Why does each element behave in a different way? What if I could make a program that could show the chemical properties of elements? This was quite of a challenge for me, because grain 9 knowledge did not include such information. I didn't give up, though. And after some research, I found that elements have this certain property called electronegativity, which dictates the chemical behavior of elements. So I started working. First, I built a database on which I wrote every single element in it. And I, um, I taught the computer to, show, to generate a self-automatic periodic table when the program would run. Then I introduced the physical properties of elements, such as melting point, boiling point, and density. This could be used by students in order to establish the state of matter elements are in at a certain temperature. And I also taught the computer to draw the 2 fee configuration of that element. This could be used by students in order to know how that element would react. Then, lastly, I introduced electronegativity. And I taught the computer to establish the chemical bond between that two elements and all the possible formulae that would form between that two selected elements. Now my confidence grew to the point that I wanted to do even more. So I went to my chemistry teacher and asked her what type of computer program would be useful in her work with the student. She was immediately happy, and she told me that for students studying for AS and A-level exams, they would need something that would help them establish the periodicity of elements easier, such as atomic radius, ionic radius, and ionization energies. Of course, I first had to know what these values meant, and then I could use this data in order to build graphs. I understood that in AS and A-level exams, these values are given in tables. But I know from my own experience that visual memory is of a greater help. So I taught the computer how to use these values in order to build graphs. The students can see easier and can remember patterns that are usually hard to memorize. My teacher intends to use this program in the class in order to explain and to make students understand easier patterns that are usually hard to memorize. Overall, with no more than two clicks, the user can see all the physical properties of elements and its 2D structure, can identify the type of chemical bond that is formed between two elements and all the possible chemical formulae between them, and lastly, can understand and remember the patterns of elements in a certain category. But now, this is just the first step in such a project. When I will advance in my studies, I will be able to add even more data to it. And by the end, I will be able to create a complete package for high school chemistry use. I am very happy to see that this program has already been appreciated. Yesterday, I found out that it has been qualified in an international phase of the context informatics in the programming section. My dream of combining programming which is only algorithms and which uses specific patterns with chemistry, which doesn't really follow a pattern and which is very complex, has eventually come true.
But now you will probably ask, after all, what does chemistry mean? Well, if you Google it, you will come upon various definitions, all in the lines of chemistry is a class you take in high school or college when you find out that 2 plus 2 is 10 or something. Well, this is because chemistry, as interesting as it is, is not everyone's piece of cake. But if students love their computer more than they love their books, then why not make it easier for them to understand this science? I believe that just like in my case, if we could understand that we are chemistry and that chemistry is us, we'd be able, while studying chemistry, to understand, in fact, ourselves. And this would help us love this science even more. So yes, this is how I pass chemistry. Thank you.